All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Um, so we got a, a midterm election tomorrow. Big deal. Um, I am going to be covering it live with the Breaking Points crew. We're going to live stream it right here on the Secular Talk YouTube channel, so definitely come check that out. Um, I'm about to give you my predictions in just a second as to what I think is going to happen. But look, I'll tell you guys up front, this is one of the most difficult elections to predict the entire time I've been following politics. Um, there are just so many factors to include in your analysis. And uh, it's difficult to weight them properly. And that's really what it all hinges on is like, which factors are you going to weight more than others? Um, because some of those factors are going to be determinative and other ones are not going to be determinative. So anyway, we're going to get to that uh, in just a little bit. I'll give you my midterm predictions. Um, we also have Donald Trump is now um, taking some shots, man. It, it's it was just a couple little bits and pieces here and there, but now it's turned into a tsunami of criticism against Ron DeSantis. This is, what, his fourth, fifth different time, like, taking pot shots at him? Um, it's clear that Donald Trump wants war with Ron DeSantis because he feels most threatened by him compared to all the other Republicans who are considering running in 2024. Um, and then I have... Some potential good news for you guys later, which is the United States is prodding Ukraine to sit down at the negotiation table with Vladimir Putin um, to try to make sure we don't escalate this thing into World War III. Um, but there are a whole bunch of caveats to that story as well. So we'll talk about that. And then I have um, Trump all but made it official. We have some new reports now that there's a specific date he is going to officially launch. So why is he doing it this early? That's an interesting question. I'm going to give you the answer on that front. I'm pretty conclusive on this one. Um, and then later on, uh, Ben Shapiro versus Candace Owens, and also um, the return of based Bill Maher, who I think did a new rule segment, which, I mean, I would argue is pretty much spot on. I would argue it was spot on. Anyway, all right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it here. So um, I want to give you guys my midterm prediction, um, but I'm going to warn you up front this is the hardest election I've ever, you know, had to cover. Uh, it's very, very difficult to give you guys a hard answer. Now, I'll go a step further here and say, anybody who does have a conclusive answer on this election is really lying to you. They don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. Um, because there are so many different factors to, to weigh in consideration. So the first thing I want to do is show you this poll here. This is the final Marist poll. Now, Marist, of course, is a very well-respected polling organization. And here are their numbers. So in Pennsylvania, they have Fetterman at 50, Oz at 44. So that would mean Fetterman wins comfortably if this poll is correct. For Pennsylvania, you have Shapiro way above uh, Mastriano. Mastriano, by the way, was at January 6th. He's a hardcore far-right figure, uh, you know, up to his eyeballs in conspiracy world. So he gets blown out by Shapiro. Um, in Arizona, we have Kelly, the Democrat, the incumbent, 49%, Masters, 45%. Again, pretty comfortable win for the Democrat it would be if this Marist poll is correct. Um, the Arizona governor race, they have Hobbs over Lake by one point. Now, look, this one, I, I feel like this race is important because Carrie Lake is like quintessential uh, new breed of Trump Republican who really doesn't care about any economic issues, doesn't care about improving people's lives, is totally and utterly obsessed with culture war issues like, you know, trans in school and stuff like that. But more importantly, is all about, like, let's overturn the 2020 election and uh, let's go full authoritarian. So that's where she is. So th they have Hobbs barely over Lake in this poll. Then we have Warnock defeating Walker, 49 to 45. Pretty comfortable victory, again, if this Marist poll is correct. Then uh, the only Democrat they have in this poll losing is um, Abrams would lose to Kemp. Now, the interesting thing about Kemp is that He's a Republican governor in Georgia, and he very, in a very high profile way, he stood up to Donald Trump and said, no, I'm not just going to, you know, overturn the results of the election to appease you. Okay, so this is the Marist poll. They have basically a pretty good night for Democrats. They, you know, you could even argue perhaps this is a blue wave scenario, relatively speaking, if Marist is correct. Now, the House is a different story, um, you know, for the for the House races. It's like an 83 percent chance that uh, the Republicans will take the House. The Senate is more of a toss-up. But again, uh, the Democrats would have a pretty good night if the Marist poll is accurate. But now, I present to you the final poll by Emerson. So again, Emerson, very respected polling outlet. Here they have, for the Arizona Senate race, 
Blake Masters, 48%. Mark Kelly, 47 So this means the Republican would win. The incumbent Democrat would get kicked out. Pennsylvania, they have Oz at 48 Fetterman at 47 Again, if this holds true, down goes Fetterman, and Oz becomes a senator. Uh, the Nevada Senate race, you have Adam Luxalt versus Catherine uh, Cortez Masto, and they have Luxalt kind of draxing them clowns, to be honest, and destroying Cortez Masto. Uh, then you have uh, Wisconsin Senate race, Ron Johnson, 51, Mand Mandela Barnes, 46. So that means one of the worst senators in the country would, uh, you know, he would win and uh, he would defend his incumbency. So the point I'm trying to illustrate to you guys here is that you kind of got polls that are all over the map and have totally different results. In some polls, it's like, well, Democrats hang on. In other polls, it's like, no, actually, Republicans are going to truly uh, usher in a red wave. But, you know, when you look at a situation like this, probably the best thing to do is to revert back to the polling averages, right? So you go back to your fundamentals and um, look at the most objective and empirical data that you can get your hands on. Well, uh, now I bring in 538. So 538 does, you know, they run their simulations and they have their averages and um, they try to factor in all these various things. Like, for example, there was like a three or four point um, advantage built in for Democrats in polling in the past few elections. So I think they've tried to adjust accordingly moving forward and have better models that more accurately reflect what's going on on the ground. Well, according to 538, they say it's a dead heat for the Senate. So Republicans would win 54% of the time. Now, by the way, this has flipped because it wasn't that long ago. It was like, you know... 65% chance or so that Democrats would hold on to the Senate. But within the past three, four weeks, you've had uh, Republicans gaining ground day after day after day. So Republicans are a slight favorite in the Senate. Um, and then you have in the House, Republicans 83% chance of winning. Democrats would only win 17 in 100. So um, this, is, this is how they forecast it. Now, again, I want to be clear. The trend here has been um, Republicans ascended. For a while, Democrats, I, Republicans were way ahead for a long time. Remember when Biden had like a 33% approval rating and nobody was happy with him? Uh, and the Democrats were just sitting around doing nothing. Um, so at that point in time, it looked like not only were we going to have a red wave, we were going to have a red wave that was even bigger than the 2010 red wave, the Tea Party wave. Well, what happened after that, of course, was Roe versus Wade was overturned by a Republican Supreme Court. Um, and you have basically the return of Trump on the scene where he's reminding everybody how psychopathic he is on a regular basis. You have the January 6th committee hearings where we learn that, like, the party has sold itself out and gone full authoritarian. And so basically between that and Democrats getting some policy victories, like the IRA being passed, the CHIPS Act being passed, um, and, you know, the PACT Act, which is the health care for veterans who were exposed to toxic burn pits. You had all these little wins. Biden, and not even li little, if I'm being honest with you, Biden um, pardoning nonviolent weed offenders at the federal level, uh, the student loan debt reduction. So you have all these different things, and you saw a Democratic surge. Biden's approval rating was in the dumps with young people. Then after he did the student loan debt reduction, it skyrocketed, okay? So you had Democrats make up the entire difference, make up the entire difference to the point where they were favored in the midterms, where... You know, they maybe could have held on to the House and were definitely going to hold on to the Senate. That's what it was, you know, what, a month ago, two months ago, whatever it was, right? Well, now, since then, it's been Republicans clonking Democrats over the head with inflation, 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 crime, crime, crime. Democrats kind of not having any message discipline and being really scattershot and, like, uh, not running uh, convincing campaigns. And as a result of that, now we have Republicans a slight uh, favorite in the Senate and Democrats a slight favorite in the House, or excuse me, Republicans slight favorite in the House, and a big favorite, slight favorite in the Senate, huge favorite in the House. Sorry, I apparently don't know how to speak and my brain doesn't work. Forgive me, it's early. Anyway, so now the question is, well, what do I think is going to happen? Look, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not some sort of political genius. Any forecast I've ever made that has come true is literally because I like looked at the numbers and said, That'll probably happen. <laughs> so, so it's not like it's not like I'm some sort of genius that is playing 5D chess here and can read between the lines. Um, but having said that, look, there's there's so many factors to weigh in consideration because on the one hand, like the tides of history are clear, certainly in modern elections, and that is when one party wins the presidency, 
what happens? In the next midterms, they get absolutely wiped out. Happened under Clinton. Happened under Obama. Happened under Trump. It didn't happen under George W. Bush, but that was because of 9-11, so it was a complicating factor, right? He picked up eight seats. The Republicans picked up eight seats under George W. Bush. And he had a 63% approval rating, again, because of 9-11. Anyway, I digress. So the general trends of history are very clear. Um, so that's a very, very important factor uh, to weigh in consideration. But then, look, another factor is we truly have never seen a Republican Party in modern American history this openly extreme. Um... And what I mean by that is simply like 53% of the candidates are denying or questioning the result of the last election still at this late date. Many of them have just gone flat out full authoritarian. Also, you know, Republicans, the Republican Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. This is a deeply, deeply, deeply unpopular thing. So you mix with that some recent Democratic victories. And I do think it sort of complicates it uh, and makes it so that it is more of a toss up than it would normally be. Right? Like, if, if the Democrats didn't have any of those policy victories, then I think it definitely would have been a red wave. Um, but the Democrats had some victories, and the Republicans are marching right off that cliff and going super extremist. Look, m my best guess, if you put a gun to my head and you said, Kyle, you can't be agnostic on this, you have to come to some sort of a conclusion. My best guess would be um, you're going to see Republicans win the Senate, but it's going to be barely it's going to be like a, by a seat or two, right? And Republicans are going to uh, pick up seats in the House, but it's going to be a little bit less than what happened under Clinton and what happened under Obama and, you know, what happened under Trump. Maybe it'll be about in the same ballpark as what happened under Trump. So that's my guess. If I had to choose something right now and a million grains of salt with this, because you could tell I'm very conflicted based on all the different factors, um, I would say Republicans probably narrowly win the Senate and... Uh, they they win the House, but it's not as big of a pickup as like the 2010 red wave. And it's sort of, you know, in the middle on that front. That's my best guess. But having said that, man, I could be totally wrong. Like Michael Moore, who accurately predicted the rise of Donald Trump and Donald Trump winning the presidency when everybody was making fun of him. Um, he says, actually, it's going to be a blue wave. What? And he says, well, the factors that we need to weigh in this scenario are uh, totally different, right? Like you have Roe versus Wade being overturned. That's a that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Um, you know, you have the student loan debt reduction. That's a game changer. You're going to get young people out to vote. So if turnout is high, Democrats are going to do better than people expect. And there are some signs already that turnout is high with all the, you know, the voting in advance, right? So uh, there, there are analysts I respect who say, blue wave. And then there are some analysts I respect who say, no, it is going to be a red wave and buckle up for that shit. And so I guess ultimately, again, my position... I know it's maybe not a sexy prediction, <laughs> but my guess is uh, Republicans barely win the Senate. They do win the House, um, but it's not as giant a pickup as perhaps we thought. And the mitigating factors in that scenario would have been Roe versus Wade being overturned and the Republicans basically going full fascist mixed with, you know, Biden actually did deliver recently with some things. Uh, for the American people, which honestly is way more than I expected. You guys know I expected next to nothing from uh, from President Biden. He's a neoliberal corporatist zombie. And I thought when he was down at that 33% approval rating, he was just going to stay there and not do a goddamn thing. And that is not true. They've done quite a bit since he was down at that 33% approval rating. So anyway, look, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but what I can tell you guys is definitely, definitely, definitely tune in Secular Talk YouTube channel. We're going to be uh, live streaming when the election is happening. We're going to be covering it in real time. We'll break down more specific numbers for you guys uh, at that point in time. We'll give you our analysis and all that fun stuff. So definitely check it out. Uh, I think we're starting at seven o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock uh, on election day, Tuesday, election day. Uh, love you guys and we'll see you there. Hey, y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now.